Hey guys, welcome back to another flashlight review. And today we're going to be looking at this light here, the Sofern HS42. It's their brand new headlamp. And I've got a bunch of headlamps already in my collection that I've reviewed. Some of you may have seen some of those videos, but this one's really quite interesting because it comes with a whole bunch of different LEDs, spotlight, floodlight, and also some red light modes in there. Something which I thought I'd never need until I actually had it. And I really like that Sofern are using this snap-on system for their headband. Check that out. And I'm really happy that they're using this system because so many headlamps that I see, especially a lot of the budget ones, use the rubber ring system, which I find just so annoying to fiddle around with and install the light, especially if you use the light as an EDC flashlight as well. I don't want to be spending a minute or two trying to install or take the light out. So far now provided me with a sample of this HS42 for review. Haven't been paid to make this video or held back on any negative opinions. So let's have a look at what you get in the box. So obviously you get the light itself. Sofern also include, as per usual, an 18650 cell. This is rated at 3000 milliamp hours. You've got this headband that also has a strap running across the top. I think that's important when you've got heavier lights like this one here, this 18650 form factor. And this is the box that it comes in. You can see some of the specifications. You can pause the video there if you want to take a look. Pretty simple kind of box. There are some accessories in here as well. We've got a USB-C charging cable, also a bunch of O-rings. No pocket clip though, strangely. So here's a little close-up of the Sofern HS42. And I've always been impressed at the level of quality Sofern is able to achieve at such a low price point. And, you know, the anodizing is nothing special. Pretty standard Sofern anodizing. But it's uniform. It's free of blemishes. Relatively durable compared to my other flashlights. And the overall machining has been done well. There's no rough spots or imperfections. It's got quite a simple design, the HS42. It's nothing to get excited about, but it's low key, functional, does the job. And down on the head, you can see there's a bunch of thermal cutouts there. And the body also has some knurling that adds substantial grip. The light is operated by this large switch here on the head. It's rubberized. It also functions as a battery and charging indicator. As you can see there, it lights up as soon as you turn it on and turns off. It's also a USB-C charging port halfway down the head. There, there is a strong magnet here in the tail cap for hands-free use. And there is also a hole for a lanyard there as well. The light takes any 18650 cell, so I have used flat tops in there. It's able to connect just due to this spring. And like I mentioned before, you know, this headband is probably one of my favorite features of this light. You know, it's so simple, but that snap-on design it latches on directly to, to the light. And then you can see there's a little kind of nub there that sticks forward. And this actually connects in with the knurling itself and provides a little bit of friction when you're rotating the light. So if you want to you can hear that, you know, it adds a decent amount of friction so you can rotate it to whatever angle you want and, you know, it stays put. It's not going to shift around. So here's a little close up of the head. And you can see pretty much this custom multi-lens optic sits flush with the bezel. Would it be nice if it was slightly recessed? And so far I'm using an SST40, 6000K fully spot beam. That's that largest lens down at the base. And they're also using three times CSP2323 LEDs for the flood, those three flood LEDs up the top. 
And those are 90 CRI LEDs as well. So it's really going to help with color recognition. And you also got these two red LEDs here, the HFL1-R red LEDs, and they're pretty bright for what they are. So let's have a look at the UI. And essentially, four clicks will lock the flashlight. Okay, and it will just flash if you try to switch it on. Um, you can press and hold as well from off to get access to moonlight mode, depending on what mode you left the light in before. So I've left it in red before, so it's giving me a red moonlight mode. Four clicks to unlock the flashlight. All right, and if you hold from off, again, same sort of deal. It goes into moonlight mode, but it stays on the moonlight mode, okay? Generally speaking, you know, from off, press again, it will go straight into the memory mode. So if I maybe put it into this mode, off, turn on, it remembers that mode. Even if I put it into the moonlight mode, turn it off, turn it back on again, like that. And there is uh, this hold function. So basically, you turn it on, press and hold, and go through low, medium, high. If you start off in moonlight mode, it will just press and hold again. It will just go low, medium, high from there and then skip the moonlight mode. In order to switch light sources, the light has to be on first and all you do is just triple click. So that there is the spot mode at the bottom. Kind of difficult to see. There we go, spot mode. And then you can press and hold to go from low, medium, high. Double press to go to turbo as well on any of those modes. And you can triple click. There we go. Now it's swapped to the to these top three LEDs, the flood LEDs. Triple click again. And you now have flood and throw beams activated at the same time. Another triple click. And it goes into the red mode. And then it just repeats that cycle initially. Now, from... Turbo, there is a couple of other hidden modes. So if you double press like that from turbo, double press again. And yeah, you have this kind of flashing mode. And if you double press again, it actually goes into other types of flashing modes for each light source. You've got a flashing light for the spot mode and also a flashy mode for the flood mode. They're almost more like strobe. <laughs> That's more of like a strobe function really. There we go, that's another one. It's difficult to see on camera. And then it will just uh, cycle back. Again, single click, it brings you back to memory mode again. It's good to have those, those flashy modes in case you need to use them for an emergency, I guess. So I ran a bunch of ceiling bounce tests here with the Sofern HS42. And I'll go through the turbo ceiling bounce tests first. So this is with flood and spot beam activated. You can see starts off at 100%. And by the one and a half minute mark, steps down. So you do get some decent sustained output on 100% or turbo mode up until the one and a half minute mode. By about two and a half minutes, light has stepped down to about 20 to 30% of its output. I ran a second ceiling bounce test on the flood mode turbo as well. And you can see pretty much the same pattern here. So the light starts off on 100%, steps down at one and a half minutes, but doesn't step down too far this time round, to just around 40 to 45% of its output. I ran a third ceiling bounce test here with the spot mode on turbo, and you can see it starts off at 100%, get about two minutes of runtime, which is pretty impressive on turbo, before it steps down to about 50% output. Same test again on the red mode turbo, and I didn't notice any significant change, and this was only a five minute test, but pretty much maintains its output all the way through, about 100-ish 100, 100 percent throughout the test. I also ran a bunch of ceiling bounce tests on the high modes, just to see when they step down as well. So this is the flood and throw mode on high, and surprisingly, it stepped down after seven minutes, which I think is pretty good performance. I mean, at 100%, seven minutes, okay? And 
kept running the test up until the 11 minute mark where I saw it starting to climb up again. So there must be some type of temperature regulation in here where it just, it figures out it can increase the brightness again, but seven minutes of runtime is pretty good with both flood and throw at the same time. Now, here's the interesting thing. I ran a flood test on high just with the flood light and it steps down just for the two minute mark and continues to step down in small increments to around 50% by the seven minute mark where it starts increasing again. And I noticed the same thing happening as well on the spot beam. You can see here about three minutes of runtime on high before it steps down in slow increments. And I think why, I think why it's doing that is because probably more current is being applied onto the LED when compared to all the LEDs at the same time. So that's why in the flood and throw mode where I just ran it on high, it was able to sustain output for seven minutes. And this is kind of confirmed also by the test that I ran afterwards with my Oppo Lightmaster Pro. Also for the sake of it, ran a test with the red mode on high and saw the same results as on turbo. So it maintains that 100% output really for the duration of the test. The Sofern HS42 produces a perfectly circular hotspot on the spot mode, surprisingly throwy, especially given the small TIR lens and the SST40 in there. I really like the flood beam as well. It's smooth, pleasing to the eye, especially with that warmer 5000K, 90 CRI. You can't get any better than that. I also really like these red LEDs in here. It's great for night vision preservation. And I was also surprised at how much light the red mode produced. So some considerations to be aware of. Would have liked there to be a glass lens on the front. And I think that's nice for added durability, but not a deal breaker, especially at this price point. And, you know, for some, an 18650 headlamp might feel a little cumbersome. 14500 cell headlamps are much lighter if that's important for you. But you do get far more light output and run times with an 18650 headlamp. So I think that's the sweet spot. My preferred form factor as well for general EDC flashlights and headlamps so that I'm not worrying about battery life or, you know, sustained output on longer trips. Third consideration is I would have liked if Sofern put in an SFT40 in there, just, or, you know, some of the newer SFT1225 variants of the spot beam. I know it's a little... They, they're a little bit pricier, but it adds a decent amount more range than the SST40. I guess I'm sport because I've got so many different flashlights, but for an average consumer, I think the SST40 is going to be blowing your mind anyway, especially if you haven't played around with a lot of these flashlights. But yeah, you know, like I said, at this price point, I can't complain. The SFT40 is still reasonably throwy in this lens. The... Fourth consideration is the red LED mode does have some artifacts up close on a white wall. It's not as bad as some of my other headlamps that do have that red mode in there, but yeah, no issues from outside, using it outside or further away. Overall, I think the Sofern HS42 is one of the best value multi-purpose headlamps out there. You really get the best of both worlds with the spot and flood beam bonus red light too, which you don't see on too many headlamps. So I'd recommend this light, this headlamp, if you're an outdoors enthusiast, traveler, or someone just someone just needs a do-it-all headlamp around the house that you can also use as an EDC flashlight. So if you're interested in getting this sofa and HS42, go check out the video description. I'll put a link to it there and a discount voucher. If you have questions about this light, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. But yeah, do me a favor. If you liked the video, found it helpful, click the like button because it helps me to get it out to more people. And if you want to see more light reviews, keep up to date with the latest flashlight news, make sure you subscribe. The Sofern HS42 and I'm on the red mode at the moment. So low, medium, medium you can sort of see, high, there we go and turbo pretty bright for the red mode that's for sure uh, let's swap over to just the spot mode
So, look at that, low, medium, high, low, medium, high. Even the high mode, I'm pretty impressed at how far that thing throws. It's got an SST40 in there, and that's turbo mode. I've already spotted an animal, a possum in the center of that field. Yep, yeah, there you go, see its eyes moving around there. And you can double press to kind of swap over. Now this is just the flood mode only. So it's got high CRI LEDs, low, medium, high. So high mode on the flood mode, the three times CSP 2323 LEDs. Turbo, that is a really nice floody beam. It's just so even and illuminates everything all the way up into the, the start of that field. And this here is the flood plus throw beam at the same time. Medium high. Okay, so that's high. So you kind of get the boost of both worlds here. Lots of flood in the foreground, and you've got a bit of spill, a uh, bit of throw there in the background, illuminating the field. Double press, and we've got turbo. Just a wall of light at the base. There, the foreground, and then a, as you can see, that hot spot hitting the trees out in the back. So. Quite a nice beam and maximum visibility, really. Okay, back to the turbo mode on red, turbo mode on just the spot beam alone, turbo on the flood mode, and the spot plus flood on turbo even the high the high mode is pretty impressive here high mode on all the uh, of each mode all right Sofern HS42 this is like a short to medium range and uh, that's low medium high on the flood mode Turbo on flood, great smooth beam and really wide profile like you want in any sort of flood flood beam and that's the flood and throw, okay. high and then turbo, so it's going to go high, turbo, And that's the turbo mode on red. It not look too impressive on camera, but in person it's quite impressive given, given the size of this light. And just the spot mode on turbo. We can go low, medium, high again. Double press for turbo. Great range again for such a little little TIR lens in there. And it's not completely dark as well. Which makes it even more impressive. 